I am very pleased to welcome this morning Pam Didner. She's the Global Marketing Strategist for Intel. Welcome, Pam. Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. And thank you for actually coming to listen to me speak on Saturday morning at 8.30. <laughs> I suspect you guys have nothing to do. But anyway, um, before I get started, I would like to make a quick announcement. And there are some unsung heroes actually put this event together. So they are Nicole, Rick, Aaron, Shaoli, Judy, Brianna, Rachel, and led by Chad, Michael, and the AV guy in the back, Scott, and the IT guy here, Ed. Can we give them a round of applause? Thank you so much for putting this event together. All right, very good. Now I can get started. And um, I, before I uh, did my presentation, I actually looked at the, the 86 email list, I think as a part of the booklet everybody received. And I did a little bit of audience mix analysis. So 75% of you are actually marketing professions that does either web design, digital marketing, marcom, creative, messaging, PR. And the other 25% uh, tend to be administrators, teaching faculties, professors. <laughs> and the breakdown of the industries, about 11 of you probably, you know, I was guessing, nonprofit, government, and also some of the uh, nonprofit association. About 38 of you are SMBs, uh, actually own a lot of small businesses and doing uh, either related on the marketing agency side of things or on the client. And about 24 uh, administrators, teaching faculties, professors. I, I think by looking at the name of the companies, about 12 years are actually belongs to a big enterprises. With that being said, I actually tailor my presentation more on the SMB, how to do some of the integrated marketing based on small budget. So I want to share some of the ideas um, from uh, examples um, from other countries, if you will. And they are actually not about Intel. So Intel is a global company. About one, we have 100,000 person um, around the globe. And we have about four or 500 marketing managers in over 50 countries. And um, at any given time, if you think about it, someone needs to actually share with all those marketing managers in terms of when the product will be launched, what to say about the products, what creative, creative concept that we will use, and uh, which are priority countries that will receive the budget. So whose job is that? My job, which is kind of boring. And there's a lot of drama involved. <laughs> and um, it's all good. It's all good. At the end, world peace. <laughs> so that is my job. But today, I'm going to spend very little time talking about Intel and share some, of, uh, share some of the examples I have seen in other countries in terms of what they do integrated marketing. And I hope you will find it very interesting. All right, let's see, what else? And I did spend a lot of time, I'm talking a lot of time about on um, this presentation. I make it visually compelling so you guys will not fall to, you know, fall to sleep and say, seriously, Saturday, 8.30, I'm coming to listen to your boring com uh, presentation. I really try to make it very, very fun. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, another thing I want to share with you, if you are online, I uploaded my presentation on slideshare.net forward slash P Dittner. You can actually see my presentation on slideshare.net. I also uploaded to www.pamdinner.com. I'm actually a blogger as well. <laughs> Blogging is hard. I need a therapy session for that, but that will be later. <laughs> anyway, so with that being said, that's just a couple items I want to share with you before I get started. Here. And uh, at, Pin, at Pam Dittner, that's how I introduce myself nowadays. And I think moving forward, that probably will be our, all our official names in the next 25 years. Can you imagine the next generation of youth, you go talk to them, hey, at Pam Dittner, how are you? <laughs> and they turn around and say, Ed, I'm awesome. 
<laughs> nice meeting you at I Am Awesome. So I feel that the way that we introduce ourselves moving forward probably will change due to the rise of social media as well. So I'm just going to go through a couple boring slides. The definition of integrated marketing, if you read this, a strategic marketing process specifically designed to ensure all messaging and communication strategy are unified across all <laughs> channels and centered around customer. Customer driven, messaging and creative. If you guys have taken Bill's um, 601 course, uh, which is talking about the basic of integrated marketing, messaging, creative, that's part of the six, is 601 or 610? Not sure. Bill was teaching that 610. So they were talking about basic of uh, the, the messaging and the creative. So that's good, right on target, right? Definition two, the development of marketing strategy and the creative campaigns that weave together multiple marketing disciplines and that cross multiple different marketing channels which are selected and executed to sue a particular goal of brand. Similar? Yeah? It's probably all the definition. I got this from Wikipedia. Yay! Very similar to everything that you have read. So that summarizes the definition really quickly. It's a campaign that will bring strategy to alive with consistent messaging and crea creative. <coughs> And I do agree with Keith's comments yesterday, if you guys were at uh, his breakout session, that he was talking about, hey, don't do social media for the sake of doing social media. Have some sort of business objective in mind. And I 100% agree. Any kind of campaigns or any kind of integrated marketing that you do, make sure that you do it with a specific or sense of purpose. So start with objective and success measurements. Of course, a lot of the channels, the marketing channel you are aware of, retail channels, social media, advertising, search, events, email, it's not a surprise to you, right? You want to make sure all those channels are integrated with consistent creative and the look and feel. However, I beg to differ. One of my favorite shows, <laughs> one of my favorite animals. <laughs> Integrated marketing is evolving. So Nasdaq, NASCAR, sorry, I, I apologize. NASCAR and David was talking about his effort of integrated marketing, right? Which is, if you see it, and if you show a slide, listed probably 10 departments that are working together. And I kind of convert that slides into a very similar format I just share with you. Now, if you look at the way they did integrated marketing, is they take marketing research, they take technical innovations, they take operations, all that as a part of integrated marketing effort. So the integrated marketing actually has reach beyond just traditional marketing channel. And uh, David's example was actually perfect to share with you in terms of the integrated marketing has been evolving. So, with that being said, I understand all of us, including myself, probably you know, not very senior, and uh, we are doing our own thing. But even with that, it's actually important to think about it. From the job that you are doing, it doesn't matter you are agency doing for the client, so you're on the client side doing your job. You need to think about it. Even with your job is only doing email marketing, how do you do integrated marketing from your role. Does that make sense? So if you actually have a specific objective, which is to generate leads for your company, for example, that's your objectives. And what are a couple other channels within your company that you should work together? So what is your marketing mix? What is your integrated marketing plan? It doesn't have to be complicated. Start with your role first. So this is just a slide I want to share with you in terms of thinking integrated marketing from your role, from where you are sitting, what are the specific departments you, are, you need to work together. But if you are a very senior person, then you probably need to think about it in terms of, for your company, what are some of the departments that you need to pull together, try to connect more dots. Okay. So give some thoughts. 
All right. When I was looking at the audience mix, and I noticed a lot of you are actually SMB, which is small and medium-sized companies. And some of you are probably um, one or two person shop. And yesterday when you were listening to David, and they are big companies, and now you are listening to me, and we are big companies. And I can share with you a lot of stuff that Intel does. <coughs> and you, are looking, you will be looking at me and say, seriously, I don't have that kind of budget. And I do agree with you. So what I want to do is share with you some of my thoughts in terms of how to do integrated marketing with a small budget. Okay. But before we go further, there's a couple things I want to share with you. And um, I was a teaching instructor actually for three years. I love to do stuff by boxes. Can you tell? So I created four quadrants. Um, there is a big and small. When I say big and small, it's a big budget, small budget. Big scope, small scope. Okay. Sometimes it doesn't have to be big budget. It can be big scope. And that requires a lot of main power to get it done, but with little budget. Traditional, new. Traditional marketing, new marketing. When I say traditional marketing, pay media, out of home pr print, those are more traditional marketing, yeah? New marketing, the more of the social media type of effort, more of a user generated type of uh, marketing campaigns, new and the traditional. And again, don't feel like you have to take a lot of notes. I already have a presentation on SlideShare.net. <laughs> Download them. <laughs> so how do I define them? Traditional and big tend to be product launches. You have big press announcements. Something is coming up from your company. Big. OK, so it can be a big product launches, big services launch, but big service launches. <laughs> New and big tend to be technology-driven customer experience. And I will talk a little bit about that. And then traditional and small tend to be regular and the routine marketing effort that you do on, regular, on, day, on weekly or timely basis. And I will give you a quick example. And the new and small started with a piece of content or one idea. I will talk about that as well. So these are how I will share with you in terms of the couple examples, okay? And uh, I will share examples from four countries, USA, yay, UK, yay, Brazil, and South Korea. Yay. <laughs> Some of you say no yay for them. Ah, you are right. Okay. I'm glad you guys are laughing. Me, my day. Traditional big product launches, boom, product launches. And this is an example I want to share that's an Intel specific example. Um, Intel, the, we always have a product launches uh, in terms of a new generation of a processors. A lot of processor is pretty much the same to you because it's embedded inside and you, don't, you cannot smell, see, and the feel about it. And, but we try to make a new processor faster and faster and faster every 18 months. That's called Moore's Law. And some of you probably are aware of it. So in a way, we actually have a product launch of new generation of process, uh, processors almost every single year, if nothing else, every 18 months. And we tend to do worldwide product launches. Remember I was talking about we have four or five marketing managers down on the ground in over 50 countries. When we do our launches, we usually do a launch in over 20 countries at any given time. And um, imagine doing just a product launch in one country or even in multiple regions. And some of you probably have to work with the different regional offices to get that ramp and get that launch. And imagine that scale in over 20 countries. So to do that well, we actually got our recipe down. And very similar to David's approach, we also actually have a multiple different marketing function we know that needs to get involved in, in terms of product launches. So obviously, a lot of those marketing functions are 
how should I say, no surprise to any one of you. You know, PRs needs to get involved um, because we are selling the product, so we need to actually have the retailers so, uh, to get involved. And uh, partner marketing, we don't sell. Who buys processors? None of you do, right? But you buy PC, you buy tablets, you, you buy some other devices. So we work very, very closely with our OEMs and our partners. And of course, Intel.coms that will show up the, our, the, the newest products. And um, a search, and Dave, uh, Keith was talking about influencers. Uh, no, David was talking about influencers. We also identify who are the key influencers who uh, are, are talking about different kind of processors and make sure that they write about the new generation of our product. So it's a very similar type of approach, but it's worldwide type of effort. All right, this photo, can somebody name this photo? I know it's a hockey team. <laughs> I know it's USA, but what year? 1980, yes, you guys are right, 1980, yes. The Winter Olympics, we, that's, I think that's the first time we actually be USSR. USSR, that's how we called them. <laughs> and uh, why does this photo have anything to do with my presentation? None! I just <laughs> like the photo. But <laughs> if nothing else, this demonstrates team spirit, right? And this is a team which is a, a fairly much of underdog but they worked together and uh, one player, I cannot remember who, sorry, scored uh, score the, um, the last point, literally five seconds to the game. And to be honest with you, in a way that you have to do a worldwide launch is also a team needs to be uh, placed together and they have to work together in a way that uh, to make sure that the launch will be flawless. All right, I found this image. Oh, mountaineers. So the concise strategy plan that to rally the team, there's a couple things which is very, very important if you want to do a worldwide launch or um, for anything that's marketing related. Always sit back and think about what is the business objective you want to accomplish. To me, that's very important. And then convert that business objective into a marketing objective, and they are different. Market, business objective can be growth revenue by 10%. The marketing objective is what marketing effort that you need to do to actually grow that 10%. Does that make sense? There's multiple different marketing uh, 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 options that you should do, right? It can be an email campaign, it can be something else, advertising. It really depending on what is your marketing objective. I think he's said it pretty well in terms of if you want to build awareness, maybe TV commercial makes a lot of sense. But if you want to drive leads, emails probably should be the one that you have the most dollar allocated, or even events. Does that make sense? So you have to understand in terms of your business objective, and you need to convert that into your marketing objectives. Your marketing objectives will determine what is the proper marketing channels that you will leverage. So when I said here, this is kind of very important. Usually when I work with my geographies, they will say, Pam, I got it, I got it, I got your business objective, I got your marketing, marketing objective. Now what I need from you mm. is what creative can I use? What can I say, which is messaging? If you work with any agency, if you're on client side, they will ask you three things, literally. First one, what do you want to accomplish? What is your marketing objective? What creative can I use? Messaging, what can I say? So in a way, that's a brief, right? So if you're on client side and working with agency, that's a brief you have to write. What do you want to accomplish? What can I say? What kind of creative can I use? <coughs> My GOs ask me, that all the time, all the time. What can I say about that product? All right, give me a couple minutes, okay, I'll get back to you. <laughs> and then also, also what kind of creative can I use? So these are the couple things you have to keep in mind. To me, those are very, very important. So I write it down, product messages, position, creative, and another thing they always ask me, how much money do I have? You have none. No, I'm kidding. So that's another thing that always worth the discussion. 
Yeah, I know. Me too. I totally understand. She said, as a story of her life, no budget. And I said, you know what? Me too. I'm a B two B gal. So Intel does marketing on the consumer marketing and the business marketing, right? Some of you probably are B two B people, I assume. And guess who get most of the love and the budget? <laughs> consumer. Guess who actually? Guess which side I am in? <laughs> B2B. And I'm still smiling. And I'm not bitter. I promise you, I am not bitter. <laughs> oh, all right. So to me, this is very important. And the way to rally everybody, the 400 or 500 marketing managers worldwide, I make sure I have those five elements in place. Once you have those five elements in place, there's n you minimize drama. You still have drama, but you minimize it because you set expectations up front in terms of what you want to do and what you want to accomplish. So integrated marketing, remember the four quadrants I was talking about? And I'm talking about traditional and big and product, launch product launches is really an example I'm sharing with you in terms of traditional and big. Tend to be big budget, top-down driven, campaign driven. When I say campaign, you do it once. Then you go dark. Does that make sense? Product launches or any kind of launches, you do it big time, three or four days or one day, and then you go dark. So it's very much campaign driven. And then <coughs> marketing takes the lead. So th that's some of the characteristic. Some of the best practices to do the launches as such, and I, I advise this actually for some of you if you are doing cross-regional collaborations. It does require some time for us. It's literally four to six months of planning. And we actually have a bi-weekly meeting. <laughs> we also have a timely launch updates with our geographies and regional offices. And we have a clear roles and responsibility between headquarters and the regional. The one that headquarters needs to be responsible is budget allocation, creative guidance, strategy setting, and uh, also um, messaging. Then the geographies will be looking at all the information we provided and determine what is the right campaign to make it happen. Social media might work for the US, but may not work in India. Email works perfectly in Germany, but seriously, it's not something that uh, 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 China would do. Does that make sense? They will determine what is the right marketing mix for their regions. It's not for the headquarters to make that decision. We provide some overall guidance, and they will take that in, customize as needed, translate it as needed, and also determine the right marketing channels to do the launches. And then we have a regular checkpoint meetings with the management and uh, share with the manager in terms of what our plans are. Any questions so far? Am I talking too fast? Cool, thank you. All right, now go back to the quadrants. I want to talk about technology-driven customer experience. And what do I mean by that? To me, that's actually a new form of integrated marketing. And uh, you can see technology driven. And I want to share with you an example. So there was one slide I shared with you in terms of, you know, you have objective in the middle and there's a different circles, which is different marketing channels <laughs> that, uh, that you, have to, you have to tap into to drive uh, integrated marketing effort. The technology-driven type of experience is using technology to make your customer's life easier or more fun. And I want to share with you a couple uh, relevant examples. And then it's really technology that's driving marketing efforts. Marketing is not taking the lead. Okay. So, and then that, whatever technology-oriented type of marketing effort will drive messaging, creative development, PR, AR efforts, social media, retail, and really the marketing channels right here subject to change based on the initiative that you are driving. 
So let me share that with you. South Korea is a unique market. Tesco has been evolving itself, adjusting to the local market. It even changed the name itself from Tesco to Home Plus. And at last, it grew to rank number two in Korea. But Tesco had to overcome one obstacle, a fewer number of stores compared to the number one company, Emart. Mission, could we become number one without increasing the number of stores? We made an in-depth study into Koreans once more. Koreans are the second most hardworking people in the world. For them, grocery shopping once a week is a dreaded task. So we decided to approach these busy and tired people. Idea. Let the store come to the people. We created virtual stores, hoping to blend into people's everyday lives. Our first try was subway stations. Although virtual, the displays were exactly the same as actual stores, from the display to the merchandise. Only one thing was different. You used smartphones to shop. Scan the QR code with your phone, and the product automatically lands in your online cart. When the online purchase is done, it will be delivered to your door right after you get home. People can relax more after work and on weekends. Result. People can shop at Tesco Home Plus wherever they go without having to visit the actual store. Moreover, we could change their waiting time to shopping time. After this campaign, online sales increased tremendously. Through this campaign, 10,287 consumers visited the online Home Plus mall using smartphones. The number of new registered members rose by 76%, and online sales increased 130%. Currently, Home Plus has become number one in the online market, and is a very close second offline. Sorry. So that's technology driven experience. And I mentioned I want to share two examples how to use technology to make your life easy or make it fun. <coughs> and next example is making it fun. and even those who insist on drinking and driving. With this in mind, Alpachka Beer, the official sponsor of Rio de Janeiro's Carnival, had an idea. The Beer Turnstile, an incentive to make people use public transportation after drinking. In a subway station near where the street carnival groups gathered, we developed a new turnstile in which the fare was paid with an empty beer can. received an average of a thousand people per hour, a volume 86% higher than conventional turnstiles on the same day. The number of drunk drivers caught dropped 43%. The collected cans were donated to a recycling NGO. The beer turnstile became news on social networks and several communication mediums, which talked about the brand's social responsibility. Unbachka beer. If you drink, don't drive. All right. What do you think? Thank you. And um, so, have you noticed this integrated marketing type of effort is really not uh, driven by campaigns or is driven by, uh, yeah, it's a little bit by product. But the first example is purely on technology. And the second one is too, if you think about it. And for all of us doing marketing, we know to do this type of marketing require the logistics behind it to make it happen is massive. 
imagine for this you have to talk to the 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 city government about the, the subway train station, you have to set up space, and um, that uh, in addition to regular uh, turnstile, you have to set up a special space, and you have to test it. And you have to, there's a lot of stuff that logistics that get into it to make it work, right? If you think about it, when a lot of uh, younger millennials, they always ask me, oh, you know what, marketing is so cool, I want to do marketing. And I look at them, I say, are you serious? Marketing is a sweatshop. You sure you want to do that? <laughs> anyway. When I said that, I guess you understand what I'm talking about. It is. So, you know, I'm showing you a video and say, oh, God, that looks so cool. But the amount of work behind it to make that happen, it's massive, massive. And also, um, then it's a technology and also the ideas that driving the conversation and the conversation did not come from you per se it's other people are talking about it all of a sudden that's part of your integrated marketing effort does that make sense so this i hate saying it the character did you like this slide did you like this slide? see this stuff move <laughs> I know. <laughs> so if the technology takes the lead, again, it's a big initiative and big budget. This stuff, you cannot do it with uh, bottom up. It has to be top down, right? And then uh, experience driven is a purely experience driven. It's not really product driven. It's experience. It's giving the experience to the, 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 your audience that they can shop easier online or they can buy your product and then they can use it for something else that also have additional benefit for them. So it's experience driven. And the marketing complements technology. Right here, it's not, techno it's not uh, marketing takes the lead, it's the technology that takes the lead. So what is the key takeaway? Find out what's going on if you are working for big enterprise. Sometimes they have some interesting initiatives and find out what they are and see if you convert that into something that other people can talk about. That's the first. And you have to look at outside of marketing. And if you're working on the client side and a smaller company, then give some thoughts. Uh, you're working on a smaller company, hold that thoughts. I have a couple, I have the couple creative ideas to share with you. And if you are working on the, the agency side, when you talk to your clients, Ask them questions, what they do outside their marketing departments. What, they, what are some of your clients are doing in their R&D departments? Find out what are some other departments are doing and see if that's something that's marketing worthy and that can be discussed and talked about. So best practices for this type of effort, technology takes the lead, IT plays a huge role, and then user experience needs to be seamless, right? So when you actually do um, uh, online buying, you need to make sure that stuff get on the phone. It's very easy for them to understand from one step to another. So user experience is key. And then the, the key things about the two examples I'm sharing with you, it's very hard to scale to different regions. Because my role is global, any kind of activities I do, I need to think about it, how that can be scaled to different regions. And uh, the, the beard uh, turnstile, like I said, may be very hard uh, to go to a country uh, in the in, in Middle East, for example, which is, or uh, certain states that the drinking is limited. And um, uh, even for um, the South Korea um, online shopping, and uh, that might be harder to do in India, right? And uh, here, if you, I look at majority of your phone, it's probably iPhone or smartphone, right? It's uh, uh, Android or uh, iOS. But in India, they have over 1,000 SKUs because they, the, 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 the income disparity is so huge. The, the phone uh, configurations, and also different operating system is massive over there. So to do actually online uh, shopping in, uh, in the country of India is actually very challenging. So this kind of effort is very hard to scale uh, globally. And another thing is test, test, test. Given that you're using technology, you know how it goes, you have to test multiple times. All right, next one, traditional marketing and small. 
that's usually regular type of marketing effort and it's some of you probably do on a regular basis. And this is very much a demand gen or lead gen type of effort. You have email campaigns, you have a social media effort, outreach, and that would drive the traffic to the company website or the store visits. And then from there, you either download the content or have purchased with certain type of effort. And this is very much existing budget. The budget has been allocated. It's something that we do on a timely basis. It's routine using existing creative. This is not something new that uh, new creative that you need and tend to be bottom up. This is something like a lot of you probably do regular basis, including myself. So with that being said, the key thing is you want to automate it. You want to make sure that if it's something that you do on a regular basis. It's not a manual process every single time. Find a way, find a way, try to automate the process and uh, compelling content to drive engagement and clear call to action. If you do an email campaign, the objective of an email campaign, what do you want your audience to get out of it? You want them to download a piece of white paper or you want them to actually click on the, the coupon so they can go to your site and the buy stuff. You need to make sure that you have a very clear call to action. So this is a regular type, a routine type of marketing effort. All right, now, Start with the content and uh, one idea. This is what I call new and small. It's a new marketing and also requires some small budget or no budget. And there's a couple examples I want to share with you. Throughout Brazil, there is a lack of blood in the blood banks. In the blood bank of the state of Bahia, the situation wasn't different. It's a fact. People only think about donating blood when someone they really like is in need. So to increase the donations, we made an invitation for people to donate blood for their greatest passion, their football team. We took off the red from the traditional jersey of Vitoria from Bahia, one of the most important teams in Brazil, with more than 100 years of history. For the color to come back, fans would have to do their part, donate their blood for the club. A cada jogo, uma letra vermelha na camisa, simbolizando o número de doações. A gente sabia que ia ter uma repercussão nacional, mas a repercussão internacional realmente foi uma grande surpresa para a gente. Some of you are working for nonprofit organizations, and um, when they started this, there was no marketing campaign. They didn't do any kind of marketing effort. They invested fifteen thousand dollars, literally, just you know, have new jerseys for um, for the players to to wear. And um, then, of course, the media got uh, picked that up, and then um, becomes integrated marketing effort later on. But when it started, it was just. You know what, why don't we try this? It may work. <laughs> and, um, 
and um, it turned out to be a big thing and get people to donate blood. It started with one simple idea and to get, get the audience to do something. And uh, I have a feeling moving forward, when you're thinking about integrated marketing, it's what, what are some of your nuggets that you can think about for your uh, uh, organization that you can get your customer to do something? Not necessarily do it for themselves and for you, maybe for a greater good. And um, for, I, I want to share with you, I, there was a conversation later and uh, I had uh, with one hotel um, marketing directors and they say they have no budget. I'm gonna hold on to my thoughts and share some of a couple comments that she made in terms of doing some of the uh, marketing based on simple ideas. But I thought I shared this with you in terms of, hey, this is started with literally very little budget, but it started with an idea. So um, it's hard to come up with ideas. At Intel, we come up with multiple ideas and we fail miserably. What I'm trying to tell you is, on the road to something that will get people talking or buzzworthy, there's a lot of efforts that go into it and you just have to keep trying and trying to find that nugget and there's not much to it. And ideas are worthless unless it's being ex executed and you just have to try, okay? All right, and uh, the shirt that was actually with a white stripe is the most pirated shirts in that football team history. And uh, it sells on the street market and uh, it was actually outsold the regular jersey during that period of time. So think small. Again, it's a customer driven experience and start with the simple ideas. And uh, this type of integrated marketing effort is started with some sort of idea and hope, hopefully, hopefully, somebody will talk about that instead of you. Okay, so this is, uh, there's another idea I want to share with you really quickly. So start with an awesome ideas and bring to life. Get your customer, go you, you get your fans to do something. And then the integrated marketing effort will follow after that. Okay, I have another example. So if you think about it, moving forward, a lot of stuff I'm talking about, even though I divide it into a four quadrants, I think moving forward with the technology and also the rise of new media, that four quadrant eventually will be merged. Everything is started with some sort of customer experience. I checked into that hotel literally three weeks ago. Lee and I both were speaking at that event. It's called Yotel. And it was a very interesting experience. I walked in 
and there was no counter, and there's a four lapped, uh, four monitor that's set up, and I have to self-check in. It's very similar to airport. Nowadays, when you go to the airport, you do self-check check in, and then you then um, you know then the uh, uh, the flying uh, not flying attendant, then someone will take your bags, and. Um, in a hotel, Montreal, I, I was there a couple days ago. They don't even have people to check your bag. You have to check the bag yourself. So the, the, the owner of the hotel was actually a pilot. So he, he was a pilot and he had this concept in terms of want to do a hotel that's a little bit differently. So it created a hotel, minimized a lot of uh, uh, main power. And then, then you can see the robot like, literally taking your luggage and the check into a box. So they try to minimize um, um, the, the, the number of the people that needed to do a job. And then when I check into a hotel and go to my room, and the bed is kind of like a hospital bed. So you push a button, you will roll up so you can sit in your bed. So that's safe space. So the, the space that's needed in real estate um, in New York is pretty expensive, right? So you don't need to put extra chairs so you can sit. So there's no chair except a chair right next to the desk. So they try to maximize uh, the, the space as much as possible. And I found that concept extremely interesting. So I call, I, I send an email to their, um, to their press, and I say, can I talk to your marketing director? I love this hotel, and by the way, it's $250 a night. How can you get a $259 per night hotel in New York City that's less than three blocks away from Times Square? Try it, seriously, <laughs> next time when you go to the city. No kidding. And then I called and the press responded to me right away and said, yeah, if you want to talk to Joe, no problem. So I had a conversation with Joe uh, Barrington, uh, marketing director in UK. And this is what she told me. She said, Pam, we have no budget. They are in the process expanding. So they built two hotels near uh, Heathrow and uh, uh, also near Amsterdam. And they just built this New, uh, New York hotel like a couple of years ago. And they are building another hotel in Singapore. And she, I was like, this is, a, this is great. And you are telling me you have no budget? Yeah, we have no budget. So every marketing they do have to get someone else to talk about them. Not them, not themselves talk about themselves. Does that make sense? And, um, and, and that she, she just basically said, Pam, you, know, you need to know your audience. You need to know what your brand stands for. So they actually have um, a brand guidance talking about the spirit and essence of their brand. They also know their audience actually fairly well. So any kind of ideas they think about it, they want to make sure it reflect their brand and also something that the younger generation of people who stay there can talk about it. Right here, this one is they they they, they said the, the, there's a renovation on the fourth floor of this hotel and the whole restaurant needs to be renovated. So they put this, you know, in any kind of renovation, they will put this, they will surround it, block this whole area, and you will hear a lot of noise. And uh, they used the wall that was blocked the renovated area, and they built a wall for Lego. So they have thousands and thousands of Legos on two buckets. So they are using the wall without spending a dime, right? And then they also get the audience and their, uh, their uh, people who stay in the hotel engaged. So they cannot go to a restaurant because they are fixing it. So they have no place to go to eat. <coughs> but if nothing else, they can start playing with logo. And that drove such a huge traffic. Everybody was taking the photos, the stuff they do, and they posted on the internet and hashtag Yotel. And what I'm trying to say is, it's a very simple idea, but get someone else talking about it. And uh, because got enough traffic generated, Joe was thinking about how they can do an integrated marketing effort and, talk, and, and then move it forward. Does that make sense? So a lot of us, we don't have budget. I get it. But you just have to pay attention. And sometimes, I can tell you I'm not creative. Look at me. I mean, I dress all black for crying out loud. <laughs> But then work with your agencies and then find somebody that's creative in your team and make sure they open their eyes. Joe told me that um, to get this going, for example, they thought, you know what, April Fool's Day. Let's create some funny April Fool's video, uh, uh, a video uploaded to YouTube and see if they can generate any traffic. Nothing. It went flat. 
So they are just keep trying different ideas and see what will create the buzz. And then once the buzz is generated, they create integrated marketing effort around it to build bigger buzz. So with no budget, what I have come to realize is you need to actually have somebody who is creative is on your agency side or your team, and then have a regular brainstorming meeting. She does that every Tuesday, one hour, and her team only three people, total of four people doing marketing effort for Yotel. I have never heard of Yotel in my whole life until I checked into that hotel. And it got me talking. It got me talking to you, and they didn't pay me. Trust me. <laughs> so what I'm trying to tell you is, in a lot of integrated marketing effort nowadays, you just have to keep trying. There's not much to it, and there's no shortcut. So that was an interesting. So marketing budget is very small. Then you have to focus on creative ideas. Don't you like Stormtrooper and Apple? So you do need to know your audience and know your brand well and a weekly brainstorming session. And really just brainstorm and talk about it. Sometimes talking and also searching online is your best uh, creative juice. And um, get others to talk about it. Hustle, AKA sweatshops. <laughs> test, 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 and keep trying. So in summary, that's not what I see you at the end, but this is kind of summarize what I want to share with you. You can do integrated marketing by thinking big or thinking small. Understanding your objectives, I think that's incredibly important. Start it with some ideas. Test, test, test your ideas. And then feel quickly and try something else. With that being said, there's another thing I want to share with you. Another bonus point. So. This is interesting. I, um, as of last Friday, I left Intel. And uh, after two decades, 20 years, and I decided to do something on my own. And I had nothing to do, so I wrote a book. <laughs> so it's called Content Marketing, and you will be launched on Content Marketing World in September. And if you go to Amazon.com and type my name, it will show up. And, uh, but again, it's content related, it's more on global scale. It may not relate it to a lot of stuff that you do, but if you are interested in reading it, check it out. <laughs> but there's one thing I do want to share with you. Uh, so um, Vishal is a colleague of mine, and uh, he took me out for lunch um, just to, to bid farewell. And that was very nice of him. And he wear a shirt, a Nike shirt. Have you noticed? That is a flash right here. Up here. It's a Nike logo. Apparently on some of the, their wearables or their shirt, when you take a photo, it will flash. And guess what? When you upload it to Instagram or Facebook, they can actually track it. <laughs> Technology driven. Exactly. Now they think about it. Just think about it. And we have no privacy anymore. So don't do anything bad. <laughs> That's my presentation. Thank you so much. Do we have time for q and I'm not sure. OK. Please. No, it's not. It's, EMA is actually a number one retail uh, grocery store um, in uh, South Korea. They feel EMA is very trendy and very tech driven, but it's really a physical retail store. Yeah. And then when you were with Intel, what was the climate like to gain agency Okay, the question I want to make sure that I repeat the question what is the climate or how do you become an agency of record uh, for Intel? The, I, I can speak this actually for multiple different technology companies. And usually for big companies like HP, Dell, Intel, um, they have agency of record for creative, right? So advertising tend to be global, so they have agency for creative. They have agency for digital marketing for HP.com, Dell.com, Intel.com. They tend to have agency of record. And uh, media, 
they have an agency of record. So if we, we usually buy media on global scale in multiple different countries. So any kind of media buy at that kind of scale, they tend to allocate, uh, they have agency of record. So agency of record tend to be creative, media, digital marketing, sp specifically for um, um, uh, dot com. And then the, the rest of it, it's kind of like you have a chance to become an agency of record, but uh, you have to talk to multiple different people. On the B2B side, we generate a lot of content, right? So for business, uh, for uh, computers or for uh, server, we generate a lot of content, uh, white paper, solution briefs or whatnot. It's easy to actually do that. Um, smaller scale, smaller scale type of project with a big company. Um, there's a process I can talk. To, I can talk about it offline. Okay. Any other question, please? I, I, your presentation rocked, by the way. Thank you. You're so kind. <laughs> you know what? You guys rock. <laughs> Show up at 8:30. I'm so impressed. <laughs> I wanted to ask. Um, I followed your. Very much along the same lines, where you involve the customers, customers. And make it fun. Where do you see gamification um, coming into the marketing world? Is you, there a connection there? Yes, it does. And uh, I don't know if there's any kind of uh, loyalty uh, agency or membership uh, type of um, you know agencies that you focus on a lot of membership buildings or the loyalty programs. I see gamification tied up with the memberships programs, any kind of membership benefits. For example, you play certain games, you, you gain certain points, and then you can exchange certain kind of benefits. So I can see the relationship to that. But again, I also see everything that you do has to come back to your business objective and the marketing objective. Don't do for the sake of doing and building buzz. Build a buzz strategically. Th does that make sense? A lot of time I will say, oh my god, I love that idea. And then I have to sit back and say, god damn it. It doesn't go with Intel brand. <laughs> you know, I want to sell sex too. <laughs> so. Anyway, so, but I hear you. Yes, there is, um, there is definitely a huge play moving forward. But initially, I see it tied with uh, the membership and also loyalty <laughs> programs. Any other questions? Thank you so much.